thank you to these sponsors of the Before I Die New Mexico Virtual Festival in 2020. A good goodbye, Gail Rubin, puts the fun in funeral planning. After, a new way to stay connected with your loved ones in the cemetery anytime and anywhere. Aquamationinfo.com, where you can learn about alkaline hydrolysis, an eco-friendly alternative to flame cremation. Compassion and Choices, offering care and choice at the end of life. Daniel's Family Funerals and Cremations and Gabaldon Mortuary in Albuquerque, Fairview Memorial Park and Vista Verde Memorial Park in Albuquerque and Rio Rancho, a Vista Cremation and Burial in Santa Fe, DeVargas Funeral Home and Crematory in Española and in Taos, Estate Pros, which offers personal dispersal of possessions due to a move, illness, or death, French Funerals and Cremations and Sunset Memorial Park in Albuquerque, and Keeper, which helps you keep memories alive with online tributes to preserve, celebrate, and share life legacies. Death is full of surprises, huh? You have no idea. This is our first session of the Before I Die New Mexico Virtual Festival. Yes, because of the pandemic, we are live online. And I am so thrilled that our first session is a newly added one. Heather Moulton is the author, along with Susan Tatterson, who was the photographer for this fabulous new book that I only just found out about because I saw an article in the Albuquerque Journal last Sunday, Graveyards of the Wild West, New Mexico. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we are excited to have you, and um, I appreciate you participating in this session to share your expertise about old graveyards in New Mexico. Our next session coming up right after this is going to be called Where the Bodies Are Buried, and we're going to talk about new trends in cemeteries. So this is a nice balance to um, uh, the old and the new. So Heather, how did you come to write this book? I think that's a, that's a great question. And uh, this is actually the second book in the series, which will hopefully be seven books total to encompass all of the Wild West. And it came about, and usually I let Sue, the photographer, tell the story because it, it, it's because of her that this actually happened. Uh, she was doing a series or is still doing a series uh, called the Abandoned, it's Abandoned series. And we would go to all of these abandoned towns. We, we worked together, we became friends. And I was like, I wanna go see the abandoned towns because I, I find that so fascinating. And we would go to these abandoned towns and I'm like, there's a cemetery over there. Can we go and look at the cemetery? And she's trying to take photographs for her book. And I was just like, but I really just five minutes, five, you know, which of course ends up <laughs> half hour, 45 minutes in the cemetery. And so we just kept doing that. Every time we go to an abandoned place, I would be like, look at this old cemetery. This is so amazing. I love this. And finally, she said, what if we pitch to her publisher? What if we pitch to them a series of graveyards? And, and then we started talking about it and we pitched graveyards of the Wild West. We pitched the seven states we wanted to do. And they said yes. And that, so that is, that's how it started. It was just me tagging along with her and then it became, it's become something else, which is really exciting for me. That is great. So um, you are going to show us some pictures from the book and talk about some of the cemeteries. I do wanna let our participants or viewers know that if you have questions, please type it in the chat or the Q and A section and uh, I will pose those questions to Heather as we go along. So, so thank you and, and welcome everyone. It is such an honor to be a part of this conference. Um, and you know, even very last minute is still, I'm really excited uh, to be here. Uh, as you can see, that's the cover of the book and, and Gail also just, just showed us that. Um, so I am the author and Sue, who is not well today, hopefully not with the COVID, uh, just a run of the mill flu, she can't be here, um, but she sends her best and. 
I will tell her all about it later. So let's, what I wanna do is take you on a trip around New Mexico. And these are the places that we are going to visit. All right, so I've starred them there and, and this is from the table of contents. Uh, we'll start with Fort Sumner um, and I don't know if you can see it, but I'm wearing a Billy the Kid <laughs> t-shirt today. Uh, then we'll move on to Lordsburg, Silver City, Las Cruces, Kelly, and then along Route 60. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because I, I don't want anyone to feel like I'm neglecting certain parts of New Mexico. It's just, it's a really big state and we only have 128 pages. So we did have to pick and choose which cemeteries ended up in the book. And so I think we picked some really great ones, um, but this is the tour that I'm, I'm going to take you on today. This is the only slide with all these words on it, all right? But I think it sets, it sets the mood and gives you an idea of, of what, what, we were, what we set out to do, okay? So I'm gonna read this one. I promise I won't read any more, okay? Uh, so death is the great equalizer. And as a concept, it both fascinates and repels us. Similarly, cemeteries also captivate and sometimes terrify us. Is that where I'll end up? Will anyone remember me? For the average person, we hope our family and friends will remember us and visit our final resting places. But for the famous or infamous, which New Mexico is full of, both, <laughs> they're often visited by multitudes. Some there to pay tribute, others to find inspiration, and still others want a glimpse of history. I've long enjoyed visiting old timey graveyards and New Mexico is rife with them. To me, they are beautiful and tragic and they all have tales to tell. I hope the photos and stories in this book offer insight into New Mexico's history and remind us to treasure each day we have in hopes that those who follow will continue to treasure our final resting places. Disclaimer, <laughs> part of the reason that I definitely wanted to include New Mexico is because I am a fangirl. Again, I'm wearing the Billy the Kid shirt, which I bought at the Billy the Kid Museum. Um, and, and really, the book, that's why the book starts with Fort Sumner, is because Billy's shadow stretches long over the land of enchantment. Um, he touched so many places because he traveled around uh, New Mexico so much. But yes, I want you to know that <laughs> I am a fangirl. Um, so there you go. All right, so here we are in Old Fort Sumner Cemetery, which was established in about the 1860s. Um, it's part of a land grant from Lucian Bonaparte Maxwell, who married into a very wealthy family. And it, at the time that he purchased the land, it was the largest land grant in uh, New Mexico. And uh, Maxwell has the most prominent uh, grave there, right? And you can see they, they actually put a map on there. They've given him a very nice tribute. Um, the rest of the cemetery is, is very sparse. There are not a lot of graves within that cemetery. Uh, and the fort is, is closed. Even the museum at the fort is closed, um, which was a bummer. I really wanted to go and, and learn even more about it. But thank goodness for the internet. All right. So here, here I was um, fangirling. <laughs> and you can see you saw that on the first slide where I'm, I'm sitting next to Billy the Kid's grave. And that's as close as I could get because what you'll notice is it's a cage within a cage. Uh, and that's because Billy the Kid's gravestone was actually stolen twice. Um, once it was stolen for 26 years, it was missing for 26 years, ended up in a field in Texas. Somebody just stumbled across it and it was returned to Fort Sumner. The next, and that was in the 1950s. It was then also stolen again in 1981. It made a, apparently a short trip to California. It was only gone for two weeks. They found it, they brought it back. So this is the original tombstone. They didn't want people to keep stealing it. So they, as, because probably fangirls, although I would never steal anything, they didn't want people to keep stealing it. So they bolted it into the ground. It's in the cement slab, bolted into the ground. And then there was a fence around it, which you can see in the background of that picture. Uh, so you can't get, you can't get as close to it as maybe, uh, let's say a fangirl would want to get. Um, there are other fascinating things about the actual gravestone. One, his birth year is possibly incorrect. Now, what's interesting about researching Billy the Kid and his history is there are so many different stories and very few ways to verify who was telling what story. Um, so it says that he was buried in, uh, or he was born, sorry, in 1960. He was actually born probably in 1959. Although again, there are, there are debating records about that. At the very top of the tombstone, there are 21 little bullets and it says truth in history because the rumor is that Billy the Kid Killed, uh, killed a man for every year of his life. That's probably not true. Did he kill people? Yes, um, probably about 
10 of them seems to be the, the going number. One of them is actually buried in uh, Old, Old Fort Sumner Cemetery. Uh, he has a, a Boot Hill wooden style grave marker, just says, you know, uh, Joe, I can't remember, sorry, I can't remember his last name, but it's basically Joe, victim of Billy the Kid, right? So even, even in death, right, Billy and his victims are still connected. Um, so it, it, is, it is really fascinating. Where does my fascination come from for Billy the Kid and possibly even just the Old West in general? Movies, TV, I grew up watching Westerns with my family. I'm obsessed with the Young Guns films, which again, questionably accurate, but still a lot of fun um, to, for me, it was a lot of fun to learn the real history, real history, Cody Fingers, because it is debatable, right? How much is truth, how much has just become myth. Right, then we move on to Shakespeare. I was an English and literature major in college. Um, I currently teach English composition and literature. So going to a town called Shakespeare was, was really exciting. Um, and the town of Shakespeare is actually up the hill from the Shakespeare Cemetery, which is in Lordsburg. And it's still, that cemetery is still used today by the, by the citizens of Lordsburg. Um, but the cemetery also has a, a really long and interesting history. We have a, uh, just a comment. Great, okay. Uh, there's a new movie being made in Albuquerque uh, about Billy the Kid called Myths and Legends. So, That's so perfect. Yeah. I, can't, I can't wait for that to come out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, for, thank you for telling me about that. That's exciting. Actually, Patricia, one of our participants, uh, typed that in the chat. So Awesome. Oh yeah. my gosh. Well, that is something for me to look forward to, just to continue my... <laughs> My fangirling. Thank now, you so much. And you said Shakespeare is near Lordsburg, which is down in the Boot Hill area of New Mexico. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, it is the, the cemetery is actually part of Lordsburg, I guess, proper. And then Shakespeare is kind of up around a dirt road, <laughs> basically. And it's a wonderful ghost town. Um, Sue actually included it in, in her abandoned New Mexico book. It's, I mean, it's just beautiful how well they've taken care of it. And so this actual image of the grave, this is not in the Shakespeare Cemetery. This is in Shakespeare, the town. Um, the town is actually right below where these four grave markers overlook their town. And these are the folks who, when Shakespeare started to deteriorate, and it has just this amazing history, but when it started to, to deteriorate, this family actually bought the town and they, they restored it. And then when, they're, uh, when they passed on, they gave it to their children. Uh, and, and they continued to run it. And now another person actually has purchased it and is trying to keep it going as a ghost, a tourist ghost town. Uh, and they've done a wonderful job. Uh, it wasn't always named Shakespeare, right? Which is, I think, interesting. It went through several name changes. There were diamond scandals there or diamond swindles. Uh, it's a really fascinating place and, and a wonderful uh, local place to visit. Um, but so that's the family that that originally uh, owned owned the town um, before they passed on and they have military markers because the father was in the military so the whole family gets those military markers. Now these these stones are actually in the Shakespeare cemetery along with uh, uh, many others it's a very large cemetery and these a couple of these I found interesting uh, one because uh, Julia Vasquez Jimenez uh, apparently was born in 1912 and died in 1855 which I find uh, fascinating and un unfortunate, right? That this error was made. It's backwards, and, isn't it? It's, <laughs> right, it's the Benjamin Button grave, gravestone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we actually, while we were you know, going through cemeteries, we actually found several like that, um, not just in Shakespeare, but in, in cemeteries all over New Mexico and Arizona as well. There's always you know, one or two in the, in the tour as we're doing them. And I, I have to wonder, well, why wouldn't they have fixed that? Well, gravestones, as, as I'm sure you guys know, are really expensive. And so it is completely possible that the family couldn't afford to have it fixed. Uh, one of the reasons I, I was told by the, the Sweet family at the Billy the Kid Museum, one of the reasons Billy's grave stone wasn't fixed when the date was, even though the year was wrong, um, is because the guy had donated it and they didn't want to pay for another stone. And these are stories that have been told to me. Um, the other one is just a, an example of Sue's phenomenal photography. I mean, as you can see, I'm sure from all the photographs, she's a phenomenal photographer. But what's really interesting about these Wild West graveyards is how different the stones are, right? So the Jimenez one you can see is this more traditional headstone. And this other one is, is probably a homemade monument, right, to a family member. 
Uh, in the background, you can see there are some white crosses which have no names on them. Some of it are just rocks in the ground that have been painted, right? So there's always a huge variety of, of types of gravestones, uh, which may have to do with, with wealth um, or lack of wealth, um, what, you know, what a family could afford at that time. Um, but it is really fascinating to see the variety versus modern graveyards, right? And you guys may talk about this at the next panel. Modern graveyards are often very uniform, right? The old timey Wild West graveyards are very, what I call hodgepodge, right? They're different. There's no real organization oftentimes. Sometimes there is, um, but a lot of times there's no organization. Is, is that marker, that big monument, it looks like it's got all these rocks in it. Is that like a closet? maybe concrete and rocks? Yes, I, that's exactly what it was. Uh, and there were actually several, yeah, similar to that. So I don't know if, if a family went in there and they just built it right there on the spot, if it was moved in, um, but that's exactly what it is. It's concrete and, and probably local rocks. Okay. And the, the cross on top, I think is cement also. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our next stop is Memory Lane, right? It's that, that trip down Memory Lane. So I thought that was a great name for a cemetery. And this is in Silver City, which is a wonderful city. It's a very artsy city. It's, I, just, it's ab I absolutely love Silver City and hope to get back there during when there's not a pandemic to go to some of the art events. <laughs> and we stopped in Silver City originally uh, because I, of course, wanted to see where Billy the Kid lived, where he, one of the places he was in prison. And they do actually have, right there near that downtown area, um, they have a replica of Billy the Kid's cabin on the spot where he and his mother lived. And his mother is actually buried in Memory Lane Cemetery in Silver City. And there she is. <laughs> this is not her original marker. Uh, the original marker was a wooden marker. Her name was misspelled on it. <laughs> uh, but you can see that, that when this one was made right there, it's prominent, prominently displayed that she was the mother of Billy the Kid because there are lots of fans of Billy the Kid. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful stone uh, and, and a nice tribute to her. It's also probably not where she's actually buried, right? So in many ways, it's a cenotaph uh, because the, many of the wet Wild West graveyards get moved around or if there's you know weather or floods, which there so often seem to be, um, then the graves, nobody knows where anything goes. Um, so they just, they put, displayed it in a very prominent place so people can find her uh, pretty easily. Of course, there's debate about whether or not she was the mother of Billy the Kid and who the father of Billy the Kid was. And I learned all about that while I was researching for this book, which is really fascinating to me. Well, and you did write that she wound up in the Southwest because of tuberculosis. Yes, yeah. yes. Many people ended up in New Mexico and Arizona because of the dry, the lack of humidity because it's so dry. Uh, and it, unfortunately, it was too late for her, so she, um, she passed away anyway from the tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Another really interesting person, of course, all of the people are interesting, <laughs> right? Uh, and that's why we do often take photographs of not just the famous or the infamous, but of, of just regular folks, right, who also have stories to tell and have a history to tell. So I discovered Ben Lilly, and this is his, his tribute. Uh, ben Lilly was a, a great hunter, outdoorsman, and he actually took uh, Theodore Roosevelt on a bear hunt in Louisiana. Not the bear hunt where we get the, the teddy bear from, but a bear hunt. And so I found that, that connection to Roosevelt very interesting. Um, but he ended up obviously here in Silver City. Uh, the other one is just a, a common Boot Hill style grave marker, and there are lots of those um, uh, throughout the, the Southwest. Uh, it's very difficult to read the names on those because they fade so quickly, um, but it is very common and reminds me of, you know, the Old West where all of the graveyards were Boot Hill style graveyards. And it just right, reminds us that, um, you know, wooden markers are going to deteriorate. They're not going to keep keep that information good for, you know, centuries, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and in fact, in one of the tours that I did of a, one of our Phoenix cemeteries for the Arizona book, uh, the lady told us that those, the wooden markers often only last about 20 years. So they have to be replaced, you know, every 20 years, depending on the weather. It's probably not as bad here in the Southwest, but yes, they deteriorate, um, which is also why I think it's so important to take these pictures 
you never know when it's when it's going to disappear right when that history we won't be able to go and visit it anymore for whatever reason and and that's part of what we wanted to capture in this book as well is just before things go we want we want people to be able to see it and treasure it for for always so my next stop on, on my Billy the Kid tour of New Mexico is the Masonic Cemetery in Las Cruces, uh, which was established uh, in 1872. And, and you'll notice kind of a pattern here. It's all these late 19th century graveyards. Uh, and this is where Patrick Floyd Garrett, the man who may or may not have killed Billy the Kid. Again, if you watch the Young Guns movies, he does in the first one, he doesn't in the second one. Um, and, and history also, there is some debate, not much debate, most people agree that Billy the Kid was killed by Pat Garrett um, in, uh, in Fort Sumner. So his, uh, Pat Garrett and his family, his wife, many of his children, they're all buried there together in the Las Cruces Cemetery. Um, Toddy is asking, what book would you recommend that is the most accurate about Billy the Kid? Not the one that Pat Garrett wrote, <laughs> um, which and, and he wrote it with with a, a, a ghost writer. But of course, they put his name on it because that's what he was most famous for. That's actually the only thing Pat Garrett was famous for. He uh, he went on to be like a failed uh, a politician, a failed rancher. So really, by the time he wrote the Billy the Kid book, which was later, you know, years after the the actual encounter. Uh, you know he was he was doing it to, for money because he was he was broke right it was really it's really very sad um which one would i recommend I, i'm of course because i'm on the spot i'm not going to be able to think of it uh but in when i was doing my research i came across so many anything written by a historian or an academic uh maybe a little dry but is is definitely very interesting and and reading the one from pat garrett is interesting too because you, you get kind of the typical story uh, of the whole situation but as far as accuracy, mm, <laughs> maybe not so much. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer for that. Um, I, I didn't prepare for that particular well, question. <laughs> or, or maybe you can let me know later and I'll send it along. Absolutely, yes, yes. Because I'm sure it's in my bibliography, which is, you know, I have 200 items in my, my bibliography. So one of them's probably in there. Uh, so this is uh, this is still the Masonic Cemetery, uh, and one of the the I think most heart wrenching parts of going to these cemeteries is they have often have a section of infants and children, um, and in Las Cruces the section is actually called Babyland, which is heartbreaking honestly, um, and it's a very large section. And so the the image that you can see on the left there uh, in the forefront is, is an image of. Uh, a, a child's grave. In the back, though, is uh, the military style one is actually someone from the Spanish American War. So I thought there was a, a kind of some really great contrast there. But but seeing babies' graves is always difficult, um, especially when it's a very large section. And you can see, you know, there are often fresh flowers, balloons, celebrating birthdays, toys, right? Um, so that that's pretty pretty gut wrenching. Um, the one on the right is actually a, a photograph that I took, and I was just really proud of it. <laughs> so it is in the book, and I just wanted to include it, uh, because at the time, Sue wasn't with me, so she gave me a camera, sent me on my way. Um, and that, that's part of the Sisters of Laredo, which is a Catholic organization uh, in, in the Las Cruces area. And they have a few uh, markers throughout the graveyard. Now, a completely different type of graveyard, because what we've been looking at so far are really urban graveyards. Kelly Cemetery is completely different. Um, it is a very rural graveyard and it's up in the Magdalena Mountains uh, and because Kelly is above Mag the town of Magdalena uh, and then it's in the Magdalena Mountains. And it's, it's known for this, the, the remnants of a mine and, from the 1800s and it's, it's still put together. You can still, you can walk right up to the, the head frame there. You can look down into the thousand foot drop which is terrifying that you could just walk right up to it and just fall right in it, uh, which we didn't, but <laughs> thankfully, uh, but we didn't want to be added to that, to the Kelly Cemetery. It is so beautiful there. And that's something else that we noticed. And it's actually very similar to the town of Jerome here in Arizona, which is also a, a mining ghost town, is the views are beautiful. In, in the Arizona book, I actually call it a, a tomb with a view, which is kind of punny. And, but, 
how else do we deal with with these kinds of concepts right other than through through humor um, but the view is is gorgeous so it's not a bad place to be buried uh, the the variety and the diversity of the people buried in the cemetery was really amazing and there were people from switzerland italy mexico ireland germany and we found that a lot in many of the mining towns because they, they did bring so many people from all over really all over the world and all over the country um, but you can see this one in this particular graveyard in kelly uh, nature really is trying to reclaim that area and it's not it's not maintained so whatever's happening just happens, right? Things are falling down, bushes are taking over. Um, but at the same time, you have this gorgeous view of the whole valley. What's interesting about this one is there were a bunch of rocks similar to the one that you see there, which is just a rock in the ground that somebody has carved in initials and a cross. There are actually quite a few of those, which there's no information about the folks um, who, are, who are there with those kinds of markers, um, which again is, is tragic because that story then is lost, that person's history is lost. Um, at the same time, there is still something there. So there are still some remnants there. Um, and if you've seen the movie Coco, right, if, if you remember someone, then their spirit is, uh, gets, you know, an extra bonus when they're not forgotten uh, in the afterlife. So at least they have that. We're going yeah, to show uh, some clips from Coco at the Halloween VIP experience. Woo. Wonderful. And it's a wonderful movie. Wonderful, beautiful movie. That's so great. <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna go on our Route 60 uh, tour, which uh, we stopped in a lot of towns and actually uh, Fort Sumner is on Route 60, right? So that's that's eventually where we ended up. But we started in Camado, which is the first town after the border between Arizona and New Mexico. And I took a picture of this, this tree that is there year round. It's not like it was the holidays or anything like that, but those are elk antlers. <laughs> Apparently, Kimado in that area is a big elk hunting area. Uh, there was actually a house that had their whole gate at the front was all elk antlers. So lots of elk <laughs> things in, in Kimado. Kimado was one of the first places that we saw in New Mexico that had uh, separate cemeteries for Catholics and Protestants. And we actually found quite a few of those along Route 60. And it was a very common practice. And even in many cemeteries, that don't, aren't separated, like the, the Catholic cemetery is here and then the Protestant cemetery is somewhere else. Um, but the sections are often separated between Catholics and Protestants. But in this one, it was actually, they're miles apart from each other. So we started with the Catholic cemetery, um, which was, and we got a wonderful tour <laughs> given to us by four young men who saw us wandering around the town taking pictures and basically said, what are you doing here? And we explained, and then they gave us a tour of their town, told us the history, might have told us some tall tales, but it, it really was wonderful to have that insight. And what a contrast to, here we are visiting graveyards and you know, here are these four young men and their dog, the town dog, um, really bringing life to, to the town and to the cemeteries. And so that was a really, I think, powerful contrast for us. So the picture with the, the giant tree and the cross, and this, this comes from those, those four young men, um, is apparently an elephant's grave. <laughs> Maybe a tall tale they just tell to outsiders, but it's a great tall tale. The tale goes that when a circus was coming through town, whenever that was, long before the boys were born, um, a circus was going through town, and when an elephant dies, you have to bury it where it dies because you can't take an elephant's corpse with you, right? And so apparently that happened in Kimado and the elephant owner wanted to pay tribute to his elephant. So he buried him right outside the gates of the Catholic cemetery and then planted this tree, put in the pavers and the cross. And so that is to remember the elephant. Could I verify that story? No, <laughs> I could not, but it's a wonderful story. And, and so I definitely included it in the book with the disclaimer that, uh, it may be a tall tale. Uh, the other one is again showing kind of the contrast, right? You can see the wooden crosses behind this very nice uh, tombstone, and then the the dog that photobombed us. That's Sissy. She was the the town dog. Um, I of course didn't want to include pictures of the the young men, but I well, I figured it's okay to include a picture of the the town dog because she was on the whole tour with us, which was really great. Now this is the uh, called the Community Cemetery, the Camado Cemetery, and uh, it's considered the Protestant cemetery, although there, there are Catholic 
um, markers there as well. You can see from the picture, which is the cover of the book, um, that that's St. Francis, uh, who's good dude, loved animals, uh, as well in the, a veteran. There are a lot of flags um, commemorating veterans. Uh, and we always try to include, at every cemetery we would go to, we would try to include veterans just to pay tribute to those of us, or those, to those folks who have allowed us to do what we do. Um, so there are some Catholics in the Protestant cemetery, uh, but they are uh, definitely not as many. Uh, and you can, we could tell that by many of the markers. I don't know if you've seen any of the St. Francis imagery where he's holding a skull and pondering mortality. Um, yes. That's actually at, um, in San Antonio at the uh, Alamo. On yes. The other side of the door, yeah. I have, yes, I have been to the Alamo and I completely forgot that until you said it right now. Thank you. I probably have a picture of it or 20. <laughs> when you get to the Texas one, yeah. <laughs> yes, oh yes, absolutely. Um, Texas, I think is our four, fourth or fifth or maybe it's last, California is our next one. So that's where we're going next. Uh, so here again, some images from the cemetery. It's, it's beautiful. It sits outside the town. It's up on a hill. It's gorgeous. You again can see the contrast between the, the white, crosses, which are sometimes they're wooden, sometimes they're just metal piping versus, you know, something that's much more elaborate. Uh, the one, the, the larger picture up on the hill, there is actually a cross up on the hill. I don't know if that's just to designate the area as a cemetery or if someone is actually buried up there. Um, it, we were cold and tired and we didn't want to hike up the hill, uh, but there is a very uh, a large white cross up there on the hill. Um, the picture in the bottom, Sue doesn't know that I included that picture, <laughs> but I wanted to pay tribute to her as a photographer because photographing graves is very different than photographing buildings, which is what her abandoned series is. It's all the abandoned buildings and ghost towns. And so usually people will ask her, how do you make graves interesting, right? Because, uh, you know, a tombstone's a tombstone, a tombstone, which it's not, right? There's huge variety. Um, but a lot of what she does is laying on the ground right? <laughs> and getting those angles and, and getting the sky and, and really, I think, truly bringing life and humanity to these inanimate objects. And she's done a, a beautiful job, obviously, you can see from the photographs. And she, does, she brings that same spirit to her abandoned series by bringing life to these buildings that have been abandoned for 150, 200 years. So yeah, she'll, she'll probably be mad that I included that picture. <laughs> but she's not here, so what can she say? <laughs> All you. right, Pie Town. Yes. I can't tell you how excited I was when we rolled up on a sign that said Pie Town because I love pie. <laughs> oh, I love then, your bandana in that photo. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, there was a cemetery in Pie Town also. It's called Juniper Haven. You can see it there in the in the photo on the right. Uh, so it was nice that not only did we get to stop and eat pie, because of course we ate pie. Unfortunately, I think we ate pie at one of the places that's now closed know, uh, because of the closed. pandemic. Yeah. I know. My heart was broken. I was like, if I had known, I would have driven there more often and eaten there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a far drive from, from Phoenix. Uh, but yeah, the pie is wonderful. There are still, I believe, three pie shops there. Uh, so if you're traveling along, along Route 60, please stop and support Pie Town because the people are lovely. The pies are amazing. Uh, and the cemetery, which is just down the road uh, from one of the pie shops uh, called Juniper Haven is also, it's beautiful. Again, you can see the gorgeous view. We were consistently overwhelmed with how beautiful New Mexico is. Um, and I'd never been really to New Mexico. So to this, the cloudy skies, the huge sky, the mountains, the variety of just, New Mexico is a gorgeous state. And I'm so glad that we got to go and, and visit it and photograph it. So this was actually one of the, images that we pitched for the cover. Uh, it didn't make the cover, the other one is the one that's on the cover, uh, but it is one of the most disturbing images. One, because it's obviously a tribute to a child or children, and those are always heartbreaking. But what we found so powerful about this particular image is again, the deterioration, right? The fact that truly nothing lasts forever. And it, it's a beautiful image. And again, we're trying to, to give life to this and, and tell stories. But it is also heartbreaking because how do you fix something like that? Um, so that's yeah, that's one of probably my one of my favorite images in the book. 
Uh, next up, we went to Willard, uh, which was this beautiful sprawling, it's in a valley. Um, so it's just this beautiful sprawling cemetery. What I noticed most about Willard uh, was again, this contrast between life and death. And you know, it's, obviously it's a, it's a pretty big cemetery, but the, the flowers, the wildflowers were so beautiful, right? It was just covered, it's like a blanket of yellow wildflowers um, and it was just gorgeous, right? So even though here we are walking among the dead, um, trying to capture the, the essence of the cemetery and yet here's this, we just kept saying, this is so beautiful, it's so beautiful. Uh, and so most of the pictures of Willard have these gorgeous yellow wildflower, wildflowers in them. Um, and so that's, yeah, that was really beautiful. Uh, Encino has two cemeteries separated by a road and like a mile between them, right? The Catholic cemetery and the Protestant cemetery. We got very clear distinction. And you're you're going from west to east across the state of New Mexico from Arizona yes. to toward Texas. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Thank you. Um, so this is another, I guess, they're all my favorite images. I should stop saying one of my favorite images. <laughs> uh, but I think this really captures sort of that uh, that wild west, the open sky, the open field, just everything is open, which is really what drew people away from the cities of the east to the west is just openness and land. Um, and then these two crosses, which are these large wooden crosses, it is a couple, I believe it's a husband and wife, um, buried together there with just the New Mexico sky, the New Mexico openness there. So it, it's really beautiful. It's also always a little bit sad to see how the cemeteries are deteriorating. Again, nature will always try and take it back, um, which of course is that connection because we're also part of nature. Um, so yeah, lots of connections there. And then Vaughn, I think our last one actually, uh, Vaughn was the Evergreen Cemetery, which was one of the most maintained of the Route 60 cemeteries. Uh, Vaughn was definitely one of the most maintained cemeteries. Uh, which is is always nice and interesting, and I I don't know if it you know if it says something about the towns and and you know taking care of it or not taking care of cemeteries. Many of the towns have very few people in them, so oftentimes there aren't a lot of people to take care of the cemeteries. But Evergreen Cemetery was pretty well uh, maintained. And this one, instead of yellow wildflowers, we had purple wildflowers, um, and there were white ones and some pink ones, and it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, this again. Want, we always want to pay tribute to veterans, uh, and I'm always fascinated by, the, again, the, the older ones. So seeing Civil War Confederate uh, and Union soldiers, many of the cemeteries have those. Uh, this is a World War I, World War II, we've seen Vietnam, uh, Korea, we've seen uh, Afghanistan and Iraq as well. So just that, that huge variety, but certainly to say thank you to, to those veterans. So we always need them you know, when we're looking for images. All right, so, and there's a memento mori uh, that's uh, actually Caravaggio, just like we were talking about uh, earlier, that's St. Jerome with the memento mori with the skull, which was very common during the Renaissance and Victorian era. Um, and I just wanna say thank you so much to, to the Doyen of Death uh, for having us, uh, for Andy for helping me uh, with the technology. Uh, and if you would like a copy of the book, uh, you know, please support local and, and buy from spiritsoftheabandoned.com. You can see the two books that we have so far and then Sue's abandoned books. She does have one on New Mexico and she's working on another one for New Mexico. Um, but we would greatly appreciate that support. If you order from us rather than Amazon, you get an autographed copy, which I have no doubt will be worth millions someday <laughs> after we're dead. <laughs> oh, that so was I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, but but that, that's what I've got. So just thank you so much. Well, you know, and I want to let you know that um, I'm the president of Historic Fairview Cemetery in Albuquerque, which was established in 1881. And on Sunday morning, we'll be doing a, a, a Q&A with um, David Haben, who does, uh, he's a, a taphophile. So He's a, a, a fan of cemeteries and very knowledgeable about symbolisms on gravestones and whatnot. So he's going to do a, a slideshow about the, the graves that we have in historic Fairview Cemetery, which thank you to all of our participants. A portion of your ticket sales are going to be donated to support historic Fairview Cemetery as well as Fathers Building Futures which gives jobs and skills to previously incarcerated fathers so they can make a living and support their families. And they make caskets and urns. How cool is that? 
That's so cool. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, I see a, a something has popped up in the Q&A. Let's, uh, oh, Toddy says, I feel some road trips coming on. Thank you, Gail <laughs> yeah. and Heather. Thank you, Toddy. Um, so um, with that, let's take a little bio break, and then we're going to be back at the top of the hour for our conversation with cemeterians from across the country as well as here in Albuquerque about what's new and happening where the bodies are buried. So we'll see you again in about 15, 20 minutes. Thanks for coming and thank, thank you, Heather. Thank you so much.